Thank you very much. Um, it was uh, very exciting to be invited to speak here, and uh, it's going to look like I took all my slides from Alice and Karen, but uh, <laughs> I swear only some of them. Um, and uh, it is a, a Karen is a formidable opponent, so I will I will do my best. Um, I am going to to discuss an alternative viewpoint about starting with seritinib. You know, obviously parallels with EGFR and other um, other fields, uh, and we'll try to piece our way through it here in my complex of interest. Just to begin with sort of really basic, you know, we're, we're using a targeted therapy, we're identifying a driving mutation, and we're treating that, with, treating that patient with a medication that blocks that oncogenic kinase. And I, I would say in general, PFS is determined not by how hard the drug hits the target, but by how well the treatment strategy prevents resistance. So that's going to be the focus of my thoughts. Uh, just a few years ago, seven years ago, this was first identified and then further characterized uh, in the LCMC project, uh, four to seven percent. Um, uh, very exciting early data uh, with incredibly impressive waterfall plots and uh, patient experiences with crizotinib uh, against the first uh, line chemotherapy. Ben Solomon uh, presented the uh, data, uh, as Karen said, uh, excellent uh, PFS advantage, better than 0.5 uh, hazard ratio, and crossover canceled any uh, potential survival benefit, apparently. Um, eight uh, different uh, new inhibitors, seritinib is the only one approved, um, and we've heard quite a bit about these, and, and even more are to come. So I, I, I had a present uh, case here, and a uh, 46-year-old woman um, uh, actually just uh, saw her for initially a year ago, uh, had a young child, uh, really out of nowhere developed a dry cough, uh, didn't respond to antibiotics, and imaging showed really extensive bilateral lung disease, primarily with some abdominal lymphadenopathy. Um, uh, in February of 2014, uh, she, uh, she began, uh, sorry, excuse me, uh, the biopsy revealed adenocarcinoma and ALK positive, uh, began crizotinib, and two months later really had complete resolution of her symptoms. Uh, you can still see there's a little bit of, of ground glass opacities, but really uh, markedly improved uh, CT scan. Uh, really at quite a success. Uh, she, uh, you know, really had her, her eyes uh, on, on prolonged uh, symptom control. But uh, just a few months later, uh, uh, imaging showed some of these ground glass opacities were becoming more uh, pronounced. Uh, we were screening her for a trial that was adding an HSP90 inhibitor, and uh, imaging revealed that while her baseline brain MRI was clear, uh, she now had uh, several small lesions, and I just showed you one, but if you, you know, go up and down, there's, there's really now almost innumerable uh, small CNS lesions. So, uh, you know, a young lady who uh, is in a tough situation and really we're wondering, is there a better approach? So seritinib, um, really, you know, also an incredibly impressive waterfall plot uh, from uh, Dr. Shaw in the journal. Uh, response rates uh, 50 to 60 percent and, uh, and again, very impressive um, imaging. And whether they'd had crizotinib first line or not, the response rate was very similar, uh, you know, perhaps uh, surprising from, you know, a priori, but, uh, but was seen in this and with many of the new generation inhibitors. Uh, however, uh, really what I want to focus on is the PFS difference. Uh, the, the, I don't know if how well you can see the colors, but the blue line is overall. The orange is patients that had had prior crizotinib, and the green is no prior crizotinib. Uh, really uh, pretty uh, distinct lines there, and as they, it was updated a year ago at ESMO, um, even uh, ongoing with that uh, significant splaying of the lines, uh, two to three times improvement in PFS. Uh, CNS history, somewhat surprisingly, didn't uh, have a big uh, difference here um, in predicting PFS, but, but the prior therapy did. And, and really, if I was going to show one slide for my argument, this would be it. I, I think that is really the, the main reason to think about first-line crizotinib. Uh, excuse me. Um, uh, Alice showed some really exciting uh, data for, uh, from its initial uh, publication showing some of the uh, molecular determinants of, of what had caused crizotinib resistance, and then uh, these patients now responding on seritinib 
many with amp uh, amplification, but also numerous uh, secondary mutations. Uh, and all of these were still positive for the ALK rearrangement. I like this uh, paper that I uh, found from just a couple months ago uh, uh, from uh, a molecular lab in China, looking at uh, the you know, free energy, basically, of, of the uh, binding of, of serotonin uh, to these different resistance mutations. And uh, just I, I thought it was a very nice work that, that showed you know, really even improved binding to the resistance mutations compared to the wild type. Elk. These are two slides from Alice uh, showing the, di the changes in the resistance mutations from after crizotinib on the left to after serotonib on the right. Uh, so the most common after crizotinib are not seen after serotonib, and then two of these more rare ones, uh, most importantly uh, G1202R, um, becoming uh, common and difficult uh, for many of the second, in the second generation inhibitors. Uh, here uh, shown in, in table format. And really, um, you know, perhaps this may change over time, but there does seem to be really more uh, broad spread activity of these later second generation and third generation inhibitors. So uh, as Karen uh, very aptly pointed out, CNS disease is a particular problem uh, seen with many of the, uh, in many tumor types even, with targeted therapies, but really crizotinib uh, has uh, some ways patients have been plagued by this problem, uh, and uh, Dr. Wu had a nice paper uh, just from last month, I think, uh, looking at uh, you know how can we hit the target even in the CNS. Um, there's really the data. We, we, this is a table of the data uh, that's available. Uh, really, still not a lot of information about CSF concentration, but, but um, as uh, Alice pointed out, the, um, the new Pfizer drug you know, may have the uh, particularly highest CSF uh, penetration ability. So, uh, getting back to our case, um, you know, uh, this patient with rapid progression systemically, but also in the brain. Why would serotonin be a, a better first-line drug? Really, across oncology, we use the better drug first. Um, in some cases, it's, it's somewhat driven by, um, by tolerability. Pemetrexid uh, is one example. Um, but also, uh, with a better inhibitor, we may get more rapid, deeper, and longer responses. I think the best example in oncology is the bcr able inhibitors, which have been around long enough for us to compare them. Uh, but as was brought up uh, previously, there's also infectious disease examples, HIV or tuberculosis. Uh, there is a sense that if, if you go from, uh, if you use weaker inhibitors, you just allow more resistance to develop, whereas if you are, have a more broad ability to inhibit uh, the resistance mechanisms uh, early on, that may make a difference. So um, I'm just, these are two slides that maybe people in this room may be less familiar with, but these are based on uh, the um, bcr able inhibitor data. On the left uh, was the first uh, report uh, in the New England Journal of, the, of nilotinib at two doses versus imatinib, and this is uh, time to a major molecular response. The bottom line is imatinib, and the two higher lines are the two doses of nilotinib. And you see really very dramatic differences in the ability to achieve a major molecular response at all and to achieve it early on. So imatinib is a great drug, but uh, nilotinib may be even better. It's been hard uh, partly because the, these hematologists, uh, th their problem is that their drugs are too good. Um, it's hard to, just, to demonstrate a survival benefit, and uh, it would be nice if we can get there in lung cancer. But uh, this is a very uh, you know, tough to read this, but I thought it uh, just would remind me to tell you uh, what was reported uh, the year afterwards, um, showing that these, uh, in, uh, at different time points, led to important uh, clinical differences. A uh, number of events was reduced in the nilotinib, particularly the higher dose arm. Uh, Event-free survival was improved. Progression-free survival was improved. Um, the uh, overall, the overall survival is not uh, improved significantly, but in the higher dose nilotinib arm it was. So I think this is at least another oncologic example of, uh, of this type of idea. And, uh, and just to remind you, the you know, nilotinib compared to imatinib does do the same sort of thing that serotonib does, inhibiting more of the resistance mutations. 
So, you know, uh, why would that, why would, why would this improved ability against resistance improve outcomes? Uh, there's less, there's presumably, and I think, I think proven at this point, less polyclonality early in the disease course and uh, hopefully less spread to sanctuary sites. Uh, so if we imagine two different examples on the left, uh, you know, kind of up with time, a, a, a relatively simple uh, tumor becomes more complex with time. If we try to inhibit it with a, a good inhibitor early and then later uh, come in with a better inhibitor, um, how is that going to compare to beginning with a better inhibitor early? And I, uh, without too much data, but a priori, I think there's good reason to think a better inhibitor early uh, may be better. Uh, then we're going to end up with, you know, more debates like this with electinib, which is perhaps looking even better, uh, perhaps better tolerated, and I think the uh, CNS response rates are uh, really quite exciting, as Alice reported. So this Alex trial is uh, coming. I think the crossover issue is um, going to be uh, going to be uh, difficult. I think in terms of interpreting and applying to real world, but, uh, but we'll we'll see what we can get. Um, so just as a quick summary, uh, the syllogism, the targeted drugs work by inhibiting the target. Prevention of resistance uh, should be our, our goal to improve uh, disease control. Use the best drug first. So thank you very much.